Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. The other day I posted a video showing how I painted the teleporter pads from the Evil Warriors Wave 1 expansion for Masters of the Universe Battleground. Today I'm going to do the terrain elements that came in the other expansion that was released at the same time, that is the Wave 1 Masters of the Universe expansion, which included three force fields. As you can see, I have started by spray undercoating the miniatures with Chaos Black. And then I'm going to Mechanicus Standard Grey and we are going to do an overbrush over all of the masonry work on this piece. All three of the force fields are slightly different. One has masonry, one has natural rocks surrounding it, and one has little mechanical devices. But I'm only going to paint this one in the video and then I will show you the other two at the end of the video as well and talk through those briefly. With the overbrush dry, I am switching to null oil and I'm just going to paint between the recesses of the masonry blocks. And if you watch my painting video on how to paint the terrain elements from the Masters of the Universe Battleground core set, you will notice that I am painting this masonry in exactly the same way as I painted that original terrain. With the null oil dry, we are switching to wolf grey and we are now going to do a dry brush. That means we put some paint on the brush, we wipe most of the paint back off of the brush and then we whip the brush over the most raised details. This is going to give the stonework a nice bluish grey colour and it's also going to pick out all of the details. And then we are switching to Ulthuan grey for a final dry brush highlight just over those masonry blocks, mainly on the sharp edges just to really bring out those details and to make the whole piece pop. And once I've done that dry brushing I'm going to tidy up the base with some Abaddon black and then we're going to paint all of the sand and rock. We are starting with Steel Legion Drab and I'm going to do another overbrush but this time using a smaller brush so I don't get it over any of the areas I've already painted. But this is the same process again and this is how I painted all of the natural rock elements from the core set and this is also how I painted the rock element around the second force field that came in this set. With the overbrush done I'm switching to Seraphim Sepia and I'm just going to apply this around all of the rocks and in any of the crevices. This is just going to help with recess shading and to bring out some different tones in the stone. I'm then switching to Zandri Dust and I'm going to do a dry brush. This is going over all of the rocks, it's going over the sand. You can also see there are a few little elements there like pieces of wood and skulls. That all gets dry brushed as well. And the most important thing here is to try and minimise the amount of this dry brush that gets on the masonry we've already painted. We're then switching to Screaming Skull and we're just going to dry brush over the rocks. We are not dry brushing the sand or any other debris at this time, just those rocks. And this really gives them a nice bright finish and really helps all of the details to pop. Then I'm switching to Avalon Sunset and it's a final targeted dry brush over the sand. Avalon Sunset is really quite bright, but I think it works really well for this Masters of the Universe set. You get a nice cartoonish sand colour, which works really well with the artwork that comes in the core set. Next, I'm using Hardened Leather, which is a speed paint from Army Painter, and I'm going to paint in the little crawling vine that is going up the side of the masonry. There is also a piece of wood on the reverse of this miniature, and I will paint that with the Hardened Leather as well. Then I'm switching to Pallid Bone and this is just going to be for the skull. You can of course use traditional paints for these small elements, but the Army Painter Speed Paints just makes it so much quicker for these tiny details. Next I'm switching to Administratum Grey and I am going to dry brush the central swirling vortex of the force field. So I'm using circular motions and I'm just going to build that colour up over that large expanse of swirling energy. And again, we just want to make sure we're not getting it over any of the masonry, over any of the rocks or the sand. And we're just trying to build up that colour. We then switch to Celestra Grey, which is a lighter grey. And we do the same thing again, but we're going to focus more on the central area of the force field. But again, it's exactly the same process. And then finally, back to Ulthuan Grey, and we do a final highlight in the centre of the force field. While that's drying, I'm switching to some Agrax Earthshade and I'm just going to apply this in a little line along where the stone sits against the masonry. And this is just to blend the two elements together a little bit more, provide a little bit more definition, a little bit more recess shading. And then I'm switching to Cassandora Yellow and I'm going to apply this quite heavily to the force field. And of course that shade will settle into all of the recesses and because we've done all of those layers of dry brushing underneath we should get some nice different layers of colour with some brighter areas and some darker areas. And I'm only going to do one of the force fields with yellow. 
For the other two force fields, I am using Ethonian Camo Shade and Fugan Orange. And for the green and the orange, they are not anywhere near as bright as the Cassandora Yellow. So after they were dry, what I did was I did another dry brush of Keramite White just over the central area of the force field. And then I did a second coat of the shades. And that really helped to bring out those highlights and brighten up the whole thing. But I will show you those in a moment. For now, this is our completely finished force field in yellow. And I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I think the energy field looks really, really good. And of course, the masonry, the rocks, the base itself, that all matches all of the terrain that I painted for the core set, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. And here we have all three of the force fields. You can see the one on the left is the Fugan Orange, the one in the middle is the Ethonian Camo Shade, and then the one on the right is the yellow that we have painted in this video. The one in the middle, it's all natural stone surrounding it, so that was painted in exactly the same way as I painted the natural stone areas on the one in this video. And then for the orange one on the left, all of those little bits of machinery, those were just dry brushed with grey and then painted with Avalon Sunset. And then all of the little details were just painted with Army Painter Speed Paints, so it's Magic Blue on the computer screens, it's Gravelord Grey on any of the computer consoles, and then it is the Blood Red on the pipework. So that's that. Let's take one little look at everything from the core set and the first two expansions on the battlefield. Here we have our three force fields. Panning down to our two teleporter pads, which I painted in my previous video. And then we have all of the other terrain elements, which I have done another video on again on the channel, showing how I painted those. But as you can see, there's really quite a lot of terrain for this game. You can really pack the battlefield. And even though I painted it using incredibly simple techniques, I think the results are pretty good. I think that looks really nice on the battlefield. Certainly for the amount of work I put into it, I think that looks very good. So as I finally pan out to show you the whole battlefield on the screen, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.